Hi, I'm Charlotte Moore, Artistic Director of the Irish Repertory Theatre. And I'm Kieran O'Reilly, Irish Rep's Producing Director. Welcome to Plaguey Hill, and thank you for joining us. When the pandemic forced us to close our doors in March, it also ended the run of Incantata, a staged production of the brilliant poem by our dear friend Paul Muldoon. The production had been selected as a New York Times critics pick, and we were immensely proud of it. A few weeks later, Paul sent us a corona of sonnets, a political construction of 15 sonnets describing daily life in the pandemic. His poems are immediately relevant and relatable, and we are proud to present them to you tonight, read by the fabulous Liev Schreiber, with saxophone accompaniment by the wonderful Lenny Pickett. As the pandemic continues, we continue to offer free access to our programming, allowing those who do not have the means to pay to participate during this difficult time. We rely on donations from our supporters to make this possible. Today on Giving Tuesday, a generous group of donors have offered to match every gift we receive. If you can afford to support us, will you please make a gift of any amount to help us? If you have already donated, thank you very much. We are very grateful. Enjoy. At the end of our driveway, the yellow recycling bin will be picked up this morning by Vlad, our superintendent of public works. I certainly don't want to impugn the motives of the village elders who, after the big flood washed it out, closed our road to through traffic. That's proved to be largely a godsend. It's now only once or twice a day, an Orphic figure passes, glancing back for whatever has his scent and will somewhat soonish, tear him limb from limb. Were it open, the picture house in Cobleskill would be showing a shoot 'em up or creature feature. For three weeks now, Jean and I have been on the lamb in Sharon Springs, a couple of old school bank robbers lying low for the foreseeable future. <laughs> It's not so long ago the future held out the promise of travel to another antique land, unknown as yet to Frommer or Fodor. I spent yesterday ignorant of the fact the valiant Adam Schlesinger has gone the way of all dust. Together with Chris Collingwood, Adam made Fountains of Wayne, a band whose songs combined the height of literary taste with low blow hooks. Ai Fen, a doctor from Wuhan, who blew the whistle on the Chinese Politburo, seems to have been disappeared by those sons of bitches. No motion hath she now. As for our homegrown kingpin, he's warning us against narcos on burrows. The Pentagon has ordered 100,000 human remains pouches once we subscribe to the idea of boxes made of pine. We've subscribed to the idea of boxes made of maple or pine since the first American Civil War, when mass production of caskets offered a kind of boon and the funeral parlor a conversation piece. The Army Corps of Engineers is preparing for the worst. There's a very fine line between the enforcement of a lockdown and good old-fashioned house arrest. There's hardly an election that isn't rigged, hardly an institution not in ruins. With the power of the European Union seriously under threat, Hungarian voters 
are given free reign to President Viktor Orban, who knows only too well the people make perfect cannon fodder. In Ireland, the use of straw for cattle fodder may be ruled out by a particularly wet summer. I'm thinking 777 and the resulting moraine. But with our theaters being dark and the national tour of Dear Evan Hansen in abeyance, Asher is back on the Upper West Side and working on his new musical about Burke and Hare. In 1832, there was a widespread belief that straw tapers or straw spills might dispel cholera from the Irish air. Yesterday, Jean took a ballet class by Zoom, improvising a bar on the banisters. What to watch tonight? Some will lament my already lowering the bar to take in High Lonesome and High Noon. Maybe the exploits of the Starks and Lannisters are also a topic of interest to the serious mind. A genuine topic of interest to the serious mind is the firing of Captain Crozier of the USS Theodore Roosevelt for expressing concern for those under his command. Nearly 10 million Americans have filed for unemployment in the last two weeks. The firing of Captain Crozier will be a defining moment of this episode when the names of the bigwigs in the West Wing are forgotten. Moraine, or Rinderpest, is characterized by fever, dysentery, a nasal discharge. Dorothy and Ryan are today donning their masks and driving to South Salem. They were meant to be married in the fall in that same pine grove Jean and I took for church. As a child, Dorothy couldn't distinguish between mucus and music. Some cattle present one or two symptoms. Some present all. <laughs> I'm not sure if Governor Cuomo's shipment of a thousand ventilators are all present and accounted for. I do know it took two Chinese billionaires to breach the Great Wall and somehow spirit them to New York. There's a fair chance these next few days we'll see the city's death toll peak. At least one of those billionaires, Joe Tsai, owns both the Brooklyn Nets and the Barclays Center, where we'd managed to book tickets for Elton John this all right for fighting Saturday night. Last evening, I broiled the sable that had been delivered by FedEx. It's my way of flying the coop. There has to be an upside to being largely housebound. And though it was farm raised, that sable met all expectations. As for those 19,000 fans, their mouths agape. When I think of them, I think of a burial mound. The Gaelic term tamlacht refers specifically to a burial mound for victims of bubonic plague. One of my heroes, Robert Graves, came to believe the Maynads would get totally blocked, not on booze, but fly a garrick. I'm on leave this semester, but today must read applications for how to write a sonnet. Of course, I'll teach in the fall. Those who pass muster will find themselves glancing back at whatever has their scent and will, somewhat soonish, tear them limb from limb. Another hero, Dionysus the Areopagite, won't force me to choose between my devotion to Times Square and my umbilical attachment to Tamlach and Tamnamur. The light from the lamps is penetrating yet distinct. I'm pretty sure P.W. Joyce renders Tamnamore as the Great Plague Hill. Today's the day our superintendent of public works comes down the hill to pick up both our recycling and our trash. I turn from the Christian iconography of the outlaw Josie Wales to offer a running commentary, a little midrash, on living off the cuff. 
I've not made much of it since I don't want to be seen to garner attention, but two weeks of a dry cough and general aches and pains, I now seem to have turned a corner. The fact that Gethsemane translates to olive press gives another layer of significance to Christ's sweating drops of blood. He knows in his bones he's about to foist himself on an unsuspecting public. Bernard Murta didn't brace himself since he didn't know he was about to further a plot. It seems Bernard Murta was the first known victim of cholera in Belfast. What Friars Bush Graveyard stands for in Belfast is a cholera pit from 1832 and from 1847 a famine pit. This second night of Passover will feast on chicken and green beans. Next week I'll add soil to the raised beds in which I grow the herbs that dried so enlivened pasta sauce and scrambled eggs. Mary Powers and my sister Maureen shared an anniversary last Saturday. Dear Michael Heffernan would have been 73 tomorrow. A grievous moraine was the fifth plague to strike Egypt. Our family Seder will be conducted by Zoom. Those allowed to move about after curfew in the Vilna ghetto must show a certificate. Shopping for victuals is akin to choosing a suitor whilst ripping out what you've woven through the day. The mass grave is a meadow filled with asphodels. For it's not to Elysian fields, but those meadows filled with asphodels. The run-of-the-mill dead are consigned in Homer. Over the last month, Jean and I have developed such a fatal addiction to Boardwalk Empire, we've watched all five seasons on the trot. Good Friday sees snow across the Mohawk Valley to the Adirondacks. A passage from the Book of Enoch lays a sinew on the concept of the Son of Man. John Wayne, in his dog tags, is pointing yet again to the wreath of thorns on the Redeemer of the Andes. It occurred to me only today that Lucifer is a version of phosphorus. The lesser celandine, so beloved of Wordsworth, is an invasive species. Not weed, too its scourge of knots. As Chile had given Ireland fuchsia, so Ireland would give Chile furs. There's a fire backlighting the word furs, the fire long thought to be crucial to its renewal. The 2014 Dictionary of the Royal Spanish Academy lists avarice as a characteristic of the Jew. To slip in diurnal in one of Wordsworth's boldest moves, as la soupe de lentille is a jazzed up mess of potage. A mezuzah is required for any room with two doorposts and a lintel. Still no word on I fan. I miss. You miss. She misses. The message, attached by a canister to the leg of a pigeon, continue to hold your hands for as long as 20 seconds under the hot water faucet. The virus has but one ambition, says a sickle-bearing Dr. Fauci, and that's getting into our lungs. To that end, it's working hand over fist. In New York, they've been working hand over fist to bury the dead stored in upwards on 50 refrigerated trucks. Though yesterday saw more snow on the ground, I was keen to invest in dying eggs for this morning. I'd forgotten that Dirk Bogard was among the first into Belson when the stone was rolled away. The character of Tadzio is based on one of those Polish barons one meets in Venice. When I was a boy, 
Our eggs were stained with furze blossom, or, as here, the Earl Grey tea I use for steeping prunes. In 1823, two men were apprehended at Belfast docks with the bodies of a woman and a child recently buried in Friar's Bush, now packed in sawdust in a barrel. As a person ages, the occipital bone fuses with the other bones in the cranium. Jean and I put on our boots and roll our eggs downhill till their skulls are bashed. Those two bodies were most likely in transit to a Scottish teaching hospital. One of our village elders, Doug, is undergoing chemo at the hospital in Cooperstown. In my effort to be a better person, I'll drop off a little tiffin for his husband, Garth. As for those lick spittles in Samaritan's Purse, I'm glad the Cathedral of St. John the Divine called them out as anti-LGBT bigots and won't give them house room. It used to be the clergy railed only about the dangers of crossroad dance halls. In ponying up 10 million, Bono and U2 may help us develop our own truth serum. My colleague Paul Lansky's Tables Clear is played on kitchen utensils. At seven o'clock each evening, we serenade with pots and pans the forgotten, now classified as essential. People who get their hands dirty. The incessant hand-washing practiced by the Pharisees was enough to give Christ kittens. Our kingpin is himself recognized as being not only tawdry, but negligently tardy in making preparations to treat the victims of coronavirus. The previously unclaimed bodies of the victims of coronavirus buried in the potter's field of Hart Island must now be claimed by all of us. We must each be an Orpheus compulsively checking our facts. I'll write a thank you note to Vlad and leave him a little care package. Seesawed. The market has seesawed. Who knew asphodel leaves stay fresh for exactly as long as burrata? My calendar is a palimpsest in which what might have been ghosts what's actually transpired. Tonight, our band, Rogue Oliphant, was meant to play Joe's Pub. The show's rescheduled for next February. It's poems spoken not by Balaam, but Balaam's ass, I want to write. Their predilection for henbane, no less than fly agaric, lay behind the maenad's weakness for shoot 'em ups and creature features. I myself need look no further for an emblem than the end of the driveway in that recycling bin. <laughs> At the end of our driveway, a standard yellow recycling bin brings back the idea of a future to which we once subscribed. Even as I pine for a past in which the use of straw for cattle fodder was a topic of interest to the serious mind, it's a past in which one constant is some form of pestilence. At present, all I can think of is the burial mound once known as Plaguey Hill that dominates Friars Bush Graveyard in Belfast. The yellow of that bin is more the yellow of bog asphodel than the yellow of forsythia or furs. In New York City, they've worked hand over fist to set up a system of field hospitals. Now there's been a flattening of the death toll from the novel coronavirus. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed Plaguey Hill. This production is the result of a lot of hard work by many people, including our great performers that you saw tonight, but also our designers, our cinematographers, especially our administrative staff, and many others. Our Giving Tuesday match expires tonight at midnight. Thank you to the many donors who have helped us unlock matching funds already. If you have not made a gift to the Irish Rep in support of our work, please consider making a contribution of $10 or more today. Your support will allow us to continue to work and hire more artists and creatives during this difficult time. Thank you, and we hope to see you during the holidays for our Christmas special. Meet Me in St. Louis is story and song and on screen, running from December the 11th through January 2nd.